Welcome to Bering Yachts. The three main materials in naval construction are steel, aluminum and fiberglass. Every recreational boat manufacturer faces a choice which material to use for their boats. In this video we will explain why Bering chooses steel. Let us hear from founder and director of Bering Yachts, Alexei Mikhailov. Okay guys, today we will talk about the materials used, commonly used for uh, yacht building, ship building. Uh, the choice is fairly narrow now. It's uh, down to fiberglass, aluminum and steel. It's uh, three dominating materials. Of course, some exotic wood production. The Turkey steel produce a lot of wood boats and some boats in Asia like Malaysia, Indonesia. Uh, China, they still have a culture of wood production, however, the rest of the world is uh, down to fiberglass, aluminum and steel. And we love and use all of these materials. Fiberglass, the lightest, especially it's vacuum infused, uh, we're building high sockets, fast moving crafts. And this is the lightest and best choice for these type of crafts. Uh, we also working with, this is, this is fiberglass, but we're working with carbon for lighten up and especially for electric versions. We do carbon uh, decks, carbon uh, tops, carbon consoles. So it's uh, for crafts which are weight sensitive, fast and uh, maneuverable. So the fiberglass is a great material. Aluminum, another great material, also light. And we're building uh, also fast crafts, the high sockets, bigger in size. And uh, for commercial application, it's very durable material compared to fiberglass. Uh, it's widely used in a smaller crafts, fast crafts, but for commercial application and some recreation application, we have uh, in development some uh, dinghies, uh, tenders for, for our uh, bearings, uh, built of aluminum. So rugged boat, rugged dinghy. Uh, love the aluminum and also this is the material for our superstructure. So all superstructures and bearing is built of aluminum. Again, we know we love this material and we use it every day. Steel, almost three times heavier, 2.6 to be exact, heavier than aluminum. So these two identical pieces, same thickness, have totally different weight and of course different properties we'll talk about this later about different properties however uh, speaking of bearings this is the materials for the hull the hull it's uh, mostly impact resistant fire resistant because we know 95 percent of fire originated in the engine room so uh, starting in the engine room and uh, this is the most fire resistant material and superstructure is lighter and it's staying on top so it's keep our boats balanced correctly without adding ballast without doing some artificial things it's just natural weight of the materials distributed correctly through the boat let us go deeper into these materials steel has been used in shipbuilding for about 200 years the global shipbuilding market is now valued at 142 billion according to 2020 data and is projected to reach 195 billion by 2030 Roughly 5% of all the world's steel production goes into shipbuilding. Steel allows for the building of gigantic ships such as the Prelude FLNG, which is 1,601 feet long and 243 feet wide. More than 200,000 tons of steel was used to build that particular vessel. Aluminum and fiberglass boats are products of the technological advancements in naval construction. Uh, durable and they're lighter than steel, these two offer several features that make them the, the go-to material in modern day shipbuilding industry. Today, companies who are looking to build uh, safe and stable boats need to make the decision on which one out of these three materials would suit their, their vision of quality and seagoing reliability. To make the right choice, you need to look deeper into the qualities and features of each material individually. If we talk about steel, not every type of it is okay for marine use. The alloy has to have carbon to increase durability and sturdiness. Adding this molecule allows us to get a good durable material for many years of use. Steel is an alloy made up of iron with the addition of carbon to make it even stronger. However, an excessive amount of carbon would make steel brittle, so the proportion has to be just right. Steel used in marine construction 
has to be strong and resistant to all temperatures and environments. We at Bering use the highest strength AH36 marine grade steel, because in addition to carbon, it is enriched with manganese, silicone, aluminum, and other elements. AH36 is the best possible option out there when it comes to uh, durability and sturdiness in extreme weather conditions and uh, temperatures for the class of vessels constructed by Bering. Boat function defines the materials that are used to build it. As a general rule, a pretty and speedy boat will be made from fiberglass. Sturdy and speedy from aluminum. A displacement boat, a slow but sure moving house on the water capable of going to any point on the globe, no matter the conditions, will be made of steel. The goals and expectation of every type of recreational boat are quite different. However, there is one issue that has to be considered first, no matter the type of boat, safety. Bering ran a set of experiments to determine which hull material offers the best safety, durability and comfort to the client. All three possible negative scenarios were simulated. We checked the materials for impact protection, abrasion resistance and fire safety. To show you a practical use of this experiment, let's imagine a vessel running into a rock with a minimal speed. Here is what may happen to steel, aluminium and fiberglass. Steel will bend a little, aluminium will bend inside, fiberglass most likely will crack or break. Each boat at some time of its life will have to withstand an impact. Whether it is an unexpected shoring, a collision with another sea object, running aground or unlucky docking, the hull will be tested and will have to tolerate the collision without structural integrity losses. Depending on approach and application, there are three standard test methods to utilize. Brunel, Vickers, and Rockwell. For practical and calibration reasons, these methods are divided into a range of scales, defined by a combination of applied load and indenter geometry. In the Vickers test, an indenter is applied to the testing surface with a certain force. The result is measured afterwards, with the result being the ratio between the applied force to the surface area of indentation. In the Rockwell test, the indenter is applied to the testing surface with two different forces. In this test, the difference between the depths of indentation of the applied forces is calculated as a base for defining the material's hardness. In the Brunel test, the indenter is a steel ball. Similar to the Vickers test, the hardness here is measured as the test force divided by the area of indentation. However, relative hardness tests using abrasion and impact can be limited in practical use. At Bering, we extensively test our materials to ensure proper hardness. Another factor at sea that affects ships is uh, abrasion, the constant contact with elements and objects that are inevitably present in the sea. Water, pebbles, um, moorings and sand, they all scratch the hull, damaging it continuously. Abrasion both thins the protective layer of, of the boat's paint and or the material itself. So faster abrasion would mean a, a decrease in the safety of the boat and growing maintenance and repair costs. Steel, fiberglass and aluminum samples were subjected to a Tabor abrasor for 30 minutes using a coarse grain abrasive paper with a pressure of 1.5 kilogram. Steel and aluminum got a 40 to 50 micrometer thickness loss in the abrasion area. Fiberglass, 250 to 500 micrometer thickness loss in the abrasion area. Based on the results, steel and aluminum have similar resistance to abrasion. Fiberglass has significantly lower results. This means that in extreme conditions, steel and aluminum have greater sturdiness and less damage will be done by the abrasive effect of the external objects. After an incident, or just as a prevention measure, vessels need to go through repair, refit, or maintenance. Here, too, the process depends on the materials. Given the widespread occurrence of the material, uh, steel boat manufacturing is not a challenging process. Welding equipment and specialists are available. However, uh, some jobs require specialists with uh, certain qualifications. To ensure the integrity of the hull, welders should perform a uniform strength of the weld. 
and only certified specialists are allowed to do so. A welding procedure qualification record is a hands-on test examining a welder's ability to perform a full penetration welding. Successful x-ray and rupture resistant tests of the weld would lead to a certification which will be valid for two years. Welding aluminum is uh, much more different than uh, welding steel. There are less specialists who have the know-how to weld aluminum and the equipment is not that widely available. The material has to be cleaned and prepped for welding. The, the welder has to know the thickness of the aluminum to avoid burn throughs and uh, because it is highly sensitive, it must be protected from contamination. Tungsten inert gas and metal inert gas weldings are the two most popular methods used when joining aluminum together, as well as resistance welding, electron and laser beam welding, um, metal arc welding, but they all require intricate equipment. When it comes to fiberglass, the owner has to know exactly which composite material was used to build the boat in order to choose the white one for repairs. It might be difficult to find the correct type of fiberglass, and not all repair shops have the, the required staff or the equipment to fix composite boats. With an ocean of water around you, there are not many things worse than a fire on a boat. Miles of cables and ventilation shafts, wood, plastic, and possible other flammable materials on the inside. If a hull is not fire resistant, this can vastly exacerbate the problem. Driven by curiosity, the Bering team decided to run a makeshift experiment using steel, aluminum, and fiberglass, and an acetylene torch. The results can be seen on video. Marine grade steel started melting after almost 60 seconds of the high temperature exposure, 5400 degrees Fahrenheit against about 2000 degrees Fahrenheit for a regular fire. The steel sample did not melt through after a prolonged exposure to the torch. Aluminum started melting about 25 seconds into the experiment and burned through while forming a hole. Fiberglass started to catch fire almost immediately. Intensive fumes began after 10 seconds of exposure and after 15 seconds, it fully caught fire while continuing to release black smoke. Steel, aluminum, and fiberglass. But how does bearing work with the metal? What does it look like to be a hands-on part of production? Let's peek inside the shipyard. We use steel and aluminum to build our boat. To tie them each other, we use special material, name is triclat. Uh, we built a uh, hull from steel, and for the superstructure, we use aluminum to keep center of gravity at the lowest point. As we can see, bearing ships are not built entirely of steel. Aluminum, a material that is close in durability to steel but also possesses several other advantages, has its use. The hulls are steel, the superstructure is aluminum. This is how these boats are built. Steel, used by bearing, is the most safe and reliable material for the hull. Aluminum improves speed and fuel consumption. However, it is not what we really buy in a yacht. We need freedom and independence from the weather, from people, from the situation around. Steel boats give us not only the peace of mind, but also independence and freedom to go almost anywhere we want. We have range, we have lots of supplies, we have comfort and all the necessary amenities and toys we might need at sea. We are free to plot our own route. And this freedom is the main thing bearing steel boats give to their owners.